Hello, everybody. Welcome uh, to Betham Online. Uh, my name is Rui Amin, and I will be leading this session today with my dear friend and partner, uh, Alicia Foss. Alicia, do you want to say shalom? Unmute yourself. Sorry, shalom, here. everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, well, today, so a little bit about uh, myself. I'm the head of the delegation of the World Zionist Organization, Department of Diaspora Affairs. Um, for those of you who don't know, our department is being led from Jerusalem by a member of the WZO executive, Mrs. Gusti Yoshua Blaverman. And we work in 30 countries around the world, but obviously our biggest delegation here in North America. And we're working with communities of all kinds, of all streams, trying to connect Jews in the diaspora to the Israeli society, to, to Jews in Israel. Uh, the idea is to bring voices of Israeli society, questions that come from the Israeli society, in order to maintain this connection to Israel, to Zionism, to, to the Israelis as a part of the modern Jewish identity around the world. And we are very, very uh, proud to lead programs in during uh, regular time, but also during the corona. This is the third month that we're doing Zoom webinars uh, with communities all over the United States and Canada. And we are very, very glad with this partnership with the American Zionist Movement and the Canadian Zionist Federation. So thank you, everybody, uh, for joining us. Today, we're going to discuss a topic that I think, um, you know, it, I think in some point of every Israeli life, it touched, it touched and affected him, and this is the connection between uh, Jewish identity and Israeli identity. And we'll see how in the beginning of the Zionism, the idea was to separate, to distinguish between those two identities by specific scholars that we will review their philosophy. And then uh, we'll see how those identities merge during the time, some of that because of of uh, Zionist, uh, uh, other Zionist scholars, and some of them because of, you know, processes that happened in, in the Israeli society that led to this uh, merging. Um, the way that we're going to structure the, se the session today, uh, so first we'll go uh, over some philosophies of Zionist scholars, then we will watch a short film called Tate, and afterward we will uh, split to specific, uh, some groups and we'll have like, discussions in small groups about, about, this, about the film. Uh, I'll send you some uh, guiding uh, questions for you to, to be able to discuss the film. Um, so Alicia, do you want to add anything before we'll start talking? So um, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, the American Zionist Movement, um, in case you don't know, is an umbrella of 33 national Zionist organizations working across a broad ideological, political, and religious spectrum, linking American Jews together in support of Israel, Zionism, and the Jewish people. We are the Zionist Federation representing the World Zionist Organization um, and thrilled to be doing this today. And I'll just remind everyone that you are muted. Um, you will be unmuted later to have conversation, but you are currently muted. And if you have any questions or concerns, just chat us in the chat box. Thank you again for all joining us, and thank you, Roe. Great, perfect. So let's start uh, with um, talking about the name of the film that we're going to watch today, uh, the name Tate. Tate, for those of you who don't know, in Yiddish means uh, father. But I'll be honest with you, if you'll go in Israel and ask the average Israeli guy if he ever, if, especially if he comes from a Ashkenazi family, if he ever referred to his father as Tate, you probably will say no. This is uh, something that is not pretty common uh, in Israel. And not to be honest, the, the Israeli people, the average Israeli people are disconnected from Yiddish and from other Jewish languages. And that happened for a reason. Uh, we know for, that from early Zionists, uh, from the early Zionism, the Zionist scholars try, try to create a new Sabra, a new Jew in the land of Israel someone that will be, uh, you know, connected to his Hebrew, it's connected to the land of Israel, disconnected from the figure of the Jews of the diaspora. Um, and Hebrew was one, to, one tool for that because it, it provided a, a common ground, a common ground between people who immigrated from Poland to people who immigrated from Yemen, uh, people who immigrated from France to people who immigrated from um, Ethiopia. And the idea was to, to create some common language, some common identity between them in order uh, to, to create a nation. And this was a very practical way, uh, practical reason that kind of um, led a lot of Zionist scholars to neglect Yiddish, even to, to, you know, to talk about how Yiddish is, is not relevant anymore. 
to the life of Jews in Israel. And uh, that's why a lot of people from my generation, I was born in Israel, I grew up in Israel, I'm a shaliach, that means that I will be living in the United States between two to three years and then I'm going back. So, But most of people in my generation don't have any connection to Yiddish. Uh, we speak Hebrew, this is our mother tongue. Um, so Yiddish was one sign about, uh, for you know, the disconnection from the old Jew, the Jew of the diaspora. Um, but we know that it's not the only thing that um, the Zionist movement tried to disconnect from. And I want to share with you some quotes of uh, some of the Zionist scholars. And let's see what they do, to what they are referring. So one second, I'm a terrible DJ and all of this Zoom, it's, it's a little bit challenging for me. So be patient. Okay, I hope you can hear it. And I chose to add some quotes of, of Zionist scholars, some of them referring to Yiddish, but some of them also referring to Judaism and to religion. Uh, so those are quotes of uh, Chaim Bredel, of Bradichevsky, some of them of, of David Ben-Gurion. I will read a few of them so you can see, every Jew must know Hebrew, but there is no reason why every Jew will know Yiddish. Um, uh, our soul is bitter about the past, our man is dying, while living because of the tradition and halakha. This is a quote of Vladichevsky. Uh, for us, the free Jews, we don't have any real connection to Judaism. This is a quote of uh, Chaim Brenner. And an irritating foreign language, uh, this is a quote of David Ben-Gurion during one of the assemblies of the World Zionist Organization referring uh, to Yiddish and saying, it's irritating, it's foreign, it's not related to us. And obviously there were other voices in the Zionist movement, but I chose to bring uh, those quotes uh, for us to understand that the Jews, the people who led the Zionist movement, the lo louder voice uh, came with a perspective that Zionism is supposed to be a secular movement, a secular movement that will be very disconnected from, uh, from its Jewish origins and from uh, the diaspora. And they had some practical reasons, but they also had some reasons that um, for us today will maybe even sound anti-Semitist. And I would like to read you a quote of Chaim Brenner. Chaim Brenner, for those of you who don't know, is one of the leading voices of the kibbutz movement in Israel, uh, incredible philosopher. Uh, and I want, I want to read you guys a quote from him talking about why Jews are being hated in the world so much. And let's like read it and then I, I would like to explain. So Chaim Brenner writing, uh, and we're referring to the people, to the Jewish people. So, so he's writing, this is a people who does not have any ability to help itself to permit, promote itself in places it wishes to be promoted. It is relying always on others all the time and its biggest aspiration is that it would just allow it to live in peace. How could they, he's talking to non-Jews, not hate these people? How could they not despise it? And you know, it, it sounds terrible. It sounds like, again, um, the fact that uh, the religious uh, character of the Jews is being used as an excuse for why they are being hated. For us today in, in the 21st century, it sounds terrible. But I want to remind you of the Chaim Brenner writing this uh, statement on 1914, when there were pogroms in, in East Europe, all over East Europe, and Jews really dealt, and the Zionist movement really dealt with the question, why we are being hated all the time? What can we do now that will be different, that will you know, promise our people, especially in the new Jewish state, a different, uh, a, different, uh, 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 a different path, a different uh, destiny. Um, and we, you know, the Zionist movement, again, trying to distinguish from Hebrew and from religiously and try to, to find a way to, to, to be different. Uh, but during the years, it, it, it's created, it created the generations of generations of, of Jews, of Israelis that are being really disconnected from their Jewish roots. And I think I want us to discuss today, uh, especially through the film, but also in the breaking rooms about, you know, if it's still the situation, do you still feel that this is the case in Israel? And I also want, so we're speaking with American and Canadian Jews here, and I'm really glad that you joined, but how it's similar to, to the battle that you are having here. You are also Jewish citizens of Western, uh, Western and modern countries. And I know that from my American friends uh, that there are some clashes between those identities. Alicia, maybe you want to elaborate from your experience. How do you feel? Do you feel that these clashes also represent in your life experience? So it's interesting. I mean, I definitely am often quoted as saying the beauty of our people is the diversity. And I think that, um, you know, we are, uh, every family even is diverse. And I think it's something that we'll, we'll learn through watching the film. And, um, you know, we're a big Jewish family. And I, I think it's important to recognize that 
you don't necessarily have to be religious or observant to be Zionistic, to be, have a connection to the land and the people, um, you know, that observancy um, and religiosity are, are different things as well. Um, and, you know, I, I often find that as an Israeli, you have an automatic connection, in my opinion, to the land that you, you know, you live, you, you have, you live by the Hebrew calendar, right? So as an American, some Americans haven't even been to Israel before. So their connection to Israel and their Judaism is, is very different. Okay. Um, thank you very much. So let's keep this comparison between the life experiences of Jews in Israel to life comparison of Jews in, in America. And again, the biggest question of this Bet Midrash today is if those are the identities are separated or do they merge during the time? I want to talk a little bit about the film. So the film Tate is actually trying to answer, to respond to this question uh, through the story of Ran. Ran is a Hasidic wrestler that was born to uh, a family in a kibbutz. His father is a kibbutznik, a secular person. And through reviewing the relationship between a father and a son, we kind of reviewing the relationship between the Israeli identity and the uh, uh, Jewish identity. I want to share with you, um, so to give you a little bit of background about uh, those two figures, Hasidic Breslev uh, are uh, follow, following Rabbi Nachman from Breslev and they have a lot, a lot, a lot of beautiful, beautiful um, spiritual um, um, ideas and principles. One of them is to, that you, a person need to yearn to God all the time, to miss God uh, uh, all the time and wandering in the world in, in a way that you always miss God and need to talk to him. They also speak about, you know, the importance of being happy all the time because everything in the world was created for a good cause. Even, you know, when you're sinning, when you become a sinner, you always can go back to your original uh, creation that was, again, created for a good cause. So they're always happy. And if you go in Israel, you'll see them sometimes dancing in the streets, in the middle of traffic. And it, it's really hard not to be uh, attracted, I found myself always like kind of want to go out of the car and start dancing with them because it's it's, it's amazing, um, and they have a lot of interesting philosophies. With regard to kibbutz members, so kibbutz, for those of you who don't know, are agriculture uh, communities in Israel. They were created uh, in the early days of uh, of the 20th century uh, by the Zionist movement, by the socialist uh, parts of the Zionist movement. Uh, the idea was to create more equal community that will take care of itself, of its individuals. Uh, they were very secular, although there are religious kibbutzim in Israel, most of the kibbutzim were secular, but they kept a great connection to he the Hebrew language and they, they saw um, their Jewish uh, identity as, you know, working the land of Israel. Uh, and, and, you know, there are a lot of Jewish rituals in the secular kibbutznik um, uh, identity. Uh, as you're going to, to watch in, in the film today. So I'll now ask Ariana uh, to screen the film. And remember, afterwards we will uh, break up to rooms and we'll have some small, small discussions. Um, so later out the cover of Ariana. Hope you find this film meaningful. Uh, one, a little bit of explanation about the, um, the actor. The actor Shibi Fulman is actually a very well-known uh, uh, activist in Israel. He's the son of Rabbi Menachem Fulman, one of the, uh, rabbi, the chief rabbis of Tkwa that uh, passed away a few years ago. Shibi Fulman still lives in Judea and Samaria, and he actually ran in a lot of coexistence uh, programs with Palestinians, uh, coming from his very right-wing perspective, but leading uh, coexisting programs um, to create connection between Jews and Palestinians in the West Bank. Uh, also leading an incredible initiative to help uh, refugees from Syria. And so he's a, a character, again, that I highly recommend you to go and follow him. He's a very, very fascinating um, uh, guy and activist. I want us guys to remember everything that we discussed. We discussed about what the Zionism have, has tried to do in the beginning. Like, the, again, the louder voices in Zionism, we spoke about Ben Gurion and Bled, uh, and Bledichewski, and we s said how during the 50s and the 60s, the main policy of Israel was to create a sabra, create a new Israeli identity, a, a new Jewish identity that was very secular and disconnected from its uh, religious theme. Um, and we just watched a film with so many metaphors uh, about, you know, Ran obviously representing the Jewish identity, his father who is a kibbutznik representing what we are trying to, uh, to say, uh, like the other side of the spectrum, the Israeli, very disconnected identity and try to think about the nigunim, like the different symbols in the film 
uh, in order to discuss these uh, next questions. So we're now going to divide us to different uh, small groups and we'll, uh, Alicia and I, and part of my Shlichim, uh, will go and uh, be in between the different rooms. And I want us to discuss like three main questions. Uh, first one, so if we are assuming that there is a spectrum between Jewish identity and Israeli identity, how those those identities were uh, represent, represented, reflected in Ron's character, in his father character. Uh, the second question is, what is the connection between those, these identities uh, that is being suggested in the film? There is a bridge that the film is trying to, to suggest, so what is this bridge? And from your own knowledge about Israeli society today, are these identities separated or we see uh, uh, emerging trends? Um, so those are the three questions. Uh, we'll take 10 minutes for that. Please feel free uh, to share your thoughts, share your feelings about the film, about the discussion, and then we'll gather again we'll, and we'll have a discussion about, you know, cultural Zionism and, you know, the, the notions and perspective of Achad Ham and other scholars that spoke about the bond and the connection. I hope everybody had uh, meaningful conversations. Um, it was too short. I feel that like in my group, we just started to talk and, and then we, we ran, ran out of time. But thank you for everyone who shared his thoughts and uh, his or her thoughts. Alicia, any uh, thoughts from your half or from your behalf about the film and about the discussion? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, family relationships are very challenging. Um, as I said earlier, I think we're all part of a family together. Um, you know, I have a struggle, um, I think, you know, ob observantly or, or Jewishly or religiously, however you want to say it. Um, you know, for me, I consider myself um, flexodox or confusedox. And I, I think that knowing my family and, and all the different levels, you know, I, I think it's just very challenging. And it was really heartwarming to see the connection and them come together. And I really enjoyed that. Um, and I enjoyed a lot of the breakout sessions. Thank you for letting me uh, join your sessions and hear a little bit about what you were talking about and what impacted well, you. Well, it's not the end. It's not the end. Don't say Lehit no, but, but Feel free to share in the chat also about, um, you know, things that you experienced. I would enjoy that. But go ahead, Roe, sorry. So the last thing that I want to, to talk about is actually, um, it's the merging identities because Zionism, we, pre we presented some very extreme Zionist uh, philosophies of Bel Katanel, uh, uh, sorry, of uh, Vladichevsky and Chaim Brenner and Ben Gurion, but there were other voices in the Zionist moment. By the way, like today, as we know, the AZM is representing so many different voices uh, in the American uh, Zionist community, but even back then we are Jews, we have so many opinions and we really, really like to share them, but um, there were other scholars, other scholars that brought different perspectives about the connection between, um, between uh, Jewishness and Israeliness. Um, and one of them was Achadam. Achadam, uh, for those of you who don't know, is an incredible philosopher and I highly recommend you to go and read his article. But Achadam was one of the uh, scholars that spoke about a secular Jewish society. He was from the secular part of the Zionist movement, but Achadam spoke a lot about, you know, the connection to, um, uh, to, to the halakha and to the uh, Jewish rituals. Achadam really believed uh, that um, every child needs to go and study the Torah and the Gemara, and he believed in the importance of Shabbat as the, the day of rest, and he kind, kind of thought that the halakha for the new Jew in the new Jewish state supposed to be not a burden, but a, an, an inspiring background that you can choose from. I can live my life as a Western modern person and I can make Jewish choices that will be Western, will be liberal, but relying on Jew, my Jewish background. If I will be familiar as an Israeli with my background, I will be able to choose. And uh, Haram provide, provide this kind of notion. It's called uh, cultural Ju uh, Judaism. I want to share with you another uh, great uh, quote by uh, Bel Katzenelson. Just a sec. So, by the way, uh, Haram is asking, can a tree disconnect itself from its root? And Bel Katzenelson talking about a different, uh, different idea. He's talking about, he's saying we must determine the value of the present and the past with our own eyes and examine them through, from the viewpoint of our vital, vital needs, from the viewpoint of progress toward our own future. And, and Berkat Tanezel was very practical. He, he was speaking about not a revolution, but an evolution of the Jewish identity that's taking the past and respecting the, the past, but choosing again what to take from it. 
And both of those scholars, leading uh, voices in Israel and in the Zionist movement that really talk about the importance of, of, uh, of us being knowledgeable about our past and about our identity. Um, I also want to share with you that, you know, for those of you who didn't hear in the beginning, but I heard a few songs, songs of artists from Israel that uh, in the recent years, we, we've seen a growing trend of art musicians that are trying to include a lot of melodies uh, from Nigunim or like uh, biblical uh, text. Uh, and we like Ishai Rabo or uh, Amir Vedon uh, and really a great number. And I want to give you a few, share with you a few examples about the Jewish current influence on Israeli culture and just to show that on my opinion those identities were never you know be, it was never impo uh, possible to distinguish between them and Israelis even seculars like myself are respecting this connection so again I will share with you another slide and then we will be able to discuss some of those uh, examples um, so one of them obviously you know is Stissel we've seen a growing trend of of, of TV shows that rely on the stories of, of uh, religious uh, communities in Israel, like Shtisel, we saw uh, unorthodox, so it's definitely a great thing. And we've seen a lot of um, theater playing relying on biblical stories or relying on stories that related to the halakha or to the, to the faith. We, uh, we have the music of, as I said, Ishai Rivio, Benayab Verdi, uh, Idan Reichel, that you probably all of you know. But we also see, so in Israel, the majority of the society is not religious, according to, you know, the uh, every uh, major statistic institute, uh, we're talking about 45% of people that define themselves as seculars and 23% that define themselves as Masotia, as traditional, and only the rest are religious. But I wanted to quote with you uh, a survey, uh, a research presented that even the secular Jews in Israel are not atheists. I think that the, the, um, the idea, the notion of secular Israeli is pretty different than seculars in other countries. We are not atheists. Every, each one of us has some connection uh, to faith or to re religious rituals. And I'll quote some of the numbers here. We're talking about uh, uh, 63 people that don't mix meat and uh, milk, 65% uh, percent that watch TV on Shabbat. I can tell you that 97% of Israelis attended a Seder uh, in the last year. And I swear to God, it's not only because their mother is crazy and she will kill them if they won't show up. It's because it's something that's important for us. I also added a picture of, from my wedding. So I'm a secular person, although I grew up in a religious uh, family, I'm a secular person today. But when I wrote my uh, uh, wedding ceremony and I was married to a man, um, it was really important to me that all of it will rely on ritual text. Again, as Echadam said, I was knowledgeable about the halakha. I was knowledgeable about Jewish religious texts and why my, my, my background, my um, cultural background, in order to choose the things that I will take in order to live in this modern world and to live according to the things that are important to me. And as a person who lived in Tel Aviv for more than nine years, I added a picture from, you know, Beth uh, Midrash, uh, uh, one of the uh, um, secular tefillot that we have, Havaya um, Israeli Tifkos, and we have so many of those initiatives of the secular people in Tel Aviv that attending tefillot and attending prayers and attending holidays in order to, you know, to be connected to our Judaism in our own very uh, secular ways. Um, so I, in the question, the biggest question of this, this session, we try to, to ask if there is a dichotomy. So there used to be a dichotomy, but it never succeeded on the way I see it. And um, I really hope, you know, you, you'll take this question and also when you, you know, analyzing and reviewing the Israeli society to think about that, because again, we were disconnected uh, the Israeli main, you know, public sphere was disconnected from Judaism, but it found its way back. Uh, we've seen in every kind of field, in, poli in politics, in art, um, in the way that we are running our communities. Um, Alicia, any thoughts about that? I see that there are a lot of questions in the chat, so I'm starting, I um, will read some of the questions, but any Yes, and I see we have that? a few um, hands up as well. Um, but, you know, I, again, going back to the, the diversity of our people, I, I think everyone's connection is a little bit different, but that we do come together with a con connection to the land, um, you know, and I, um, I think that, you know, there's just a, a challenge as an American Jew, um, you know, what makes you a Jew? An age old question, right? Um, 
it's not that we eat bagels. It's a, it's our connection to the land and, and to our Zionist connection. And I know that, you know, being religious doesn't, doesn't necessarily give you that connection and, and not being religious, but having that connection. I know here in the States, um, Passover is a big thing too. Um, I think I was invited to upwards of a dozen uh, Passover seders on Zoom this year, thank God. Um, it was really a, a special time and really meaningful and silver lining of everything going on was a, a, a beautiful way to connect to others that maybe you can't normally connect with. And I think that that was important. And I think right now it's a time where we're helping kind of bridge the gap because we're able to do all these Zoom calls, I'm sure many of you, you know, a few months ago didn't even know what Zoom was. And I think it's great that we were all able to be here together and as a, as a people with a common connection. So it's quite amazing because people were asking questions in the chat, but some other people responded to them. So I guess uh, we can sum up this, uh, uh, this discussion. Next week, we will have a different kind of, of program, but we will review posters from the Zionist movement and from Israel's history. And we will discuss, you know, the different trends in Zionism and, you know, the different processes that happened to, uh, through Zionism from uh, the point of view of its graphic uh, materials and design. Again, Alicia, I want to thank you so much and to thank everybody in the AZM, uh, Richard, Herbert, Francine, uh, for this partnership and from the Canadian Zionist Federation as well. Uh, it was a great pleasure for me and I hope you found this uh, discussion meaningful. And see you next week, Lito. Thank you, Rowie. And, and I'm really enjoying all the comments. And thank you for, you know, mentioning some of the things. Thank you for answering some of the questions. You've all been wonderful. And we look forward to having you participate in our future programs. And as always, we're available if you have any other questions or concerns. So thank you. By the way, if anybody feels that we didn't respond to his question, so Alicia is going to post this video on AZM uh, Facebook page, and I will do my best to respond to every question that I missed during this session. So feel free to do so. And again, to Baraba and Lee